Hi everyone, Liz here, thanks for stopping by. So, today I am kitting up my little donkey, which is a little bit of a Christmassy sort of kit, but uh, I am giving it to somebody as a present. I've nearly completed my balloons and, I've, well, to be honest, I've completed a lot of diamond painting things in the last week. Um, and I will be doing full reviews and kitting downs on them. But I thought I'd kit this one up and have a little bit of a chat with you and let you know what's been happening in the Harrison household this week. Oh my goodness. Right, so we have 25 drawers in this one to kit up. And I've got my little 30 storage case with my 30 bottles in. So I'll put that there. See, it is craft buddy crystal art little donkey that we are going to be kitting up, which is very, very sweet. It's mummy and baby just having a little bit of a nuzzle. Whoa, look how cute that is. And uh, that's your picture of when it's done. I did do an unboxing on this, I think around about January time. Um, it is in my unboxing playlists. So, yeah, I'll just pop that one on one side for now. Um, I've taken the key code from the back of the canvas and it's all capital letters with uh, DMC codes and uh, these specials drill codes at the bottom there as well and I photocopied it in my printer, run it through my Xyron sticker maker which these are wonderful from Amazon or eBay or I think Xyron do actually sell them there uh, on their site as well there is a Xyron website because they do do a lot of different like laminating type machines and sticker type machines and all sorts of things but uh, this is the one I use the most okay so we need to get these on the bottles and then we'll start putting some drills in I get started so I hope everybody is doing okay uh, we've had a bit of a week <laughs> just for a change oh and it isn't getting any better because that glue doesn't want to come off me. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, where can I start? Uh, we had uh, our daughter and the granddaughters came uh, last week and that was lovely to see them. And Millie, our little Scotty dog, was over the moon because she loves children of any age and just like cuddles and playing and... Uh, yeah, we just have a, a good laugh and it always brightens Hubby's day um, to uh, see them. You know, it's somebody else to talk to rather than just me. Um, yeah, with the best will in the world, when you're spending 24 hours a day, seven days a week with somebody, you do eventually run out of things to say. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, and then... The following day, we were supposed to be at the hospital for his two weeks checkup on his bloods from when he had his last uh, blood tests. Uh, if you don't know, Hubby's had um, chemotherapy for leukaemia um, and we are keeping an eye on him, see how it goes. Uh, things weren't looking too bad last time we went, but he does seem to, or he had seemed to have lost um, a lot of strength we were really struggling um, and after sort of nearly three years now um, you know we are finding it hard uh, well I'm finding it hard I've got to admit um, looking after somebody isn't something that you choose all the time uh, I know some pe wonderful people uh, take a career in nursing and caring and hats off to them. It's never a career that I thought I was suited to or could do. Um, and at this time, you know, um, because of the way things have gone um, and what's happened to hubby, I've suddenly become a full-time carer after working full-time, you know, and doing all the things that people do. Uh, suddenly your life is upside down and changed and you just adapt. You know, um, I mean, I've had people say to me, I don't know how you do it. And I mean, ugh, well, you don't really have a choice, but you don't think about it either. It's not like you think, oh, yes, I'm going to be a carer. You just have to get on with it because, well, you just do, you know. Um, you're never going to abandon somebody that you love. Um, all this, you know, even before uh, all this happened, there was some days where I could quite cheerfully have, um, well... <laughs> You know what I mean. <laughs> um, we've been together.
together a long time and that we don't get on together all the time. So, yeah. Anyway, so, so we seem to be getting weight. Where are we going to start now? I'm going to make sure I get these in the right order this time and don't start kitting up. Oh, yes, I remember. This is the one where the... Um, the lettering on the bags look has sort of like stuck and has started coming away so I am going to have to be careful with this one anyway possibly it wasn't the best one to be doing on camera and talking but anyway we'll see how we get on if you start seeing me go wrong shout out <laughs> so we'll start off with A put that in there oh well I'll put it on top there for now just in case I need to check anything so, yeah, so we come to Thursday, it's supposed to be, and they'd said rather than us trooping sort of, well, it's, it's up to an hour um, to get across the far side of the city, um, and they do seem to like us going in rush hour traffic, I suppose it's because if you're doing blood tests, you need them in the morning. Uh, but they said we could go to our local doctors, which is like 10 minutes down the road, which is brilliant. But uh, Hubby doesn't like needles, gets real upset about things and I'd spent all night worrying and kept us both awake and it wasn't good and then he started being sick um on the Thursday morning and there was just no way I could get him into the car to get him to the doctors so I rang the doctors to see if it was possible um a district nurse or somebody could come out and do the blood test and they said, oh, well, they would have to ask the doctor. It's you know one of those things, which I understand. Um, you know, the nurses are really, really busy um, with everything that's going on. Um, there are quite a few staff shortages. And uh, people, you know, are having to take time off sick and isolate away from people. So, yeah, it's, it's not the best of times to be asking things like that at short notice. But anyway, all well, you've got to ask, you know. He needed it done. Um, the, so I rang the hospital. Um, we have like a, a number for the cancer ward, the cancer nurses, and just explained what was happening. And she said, well, can you get him here? And I said, well, no, because if I can't... Yeah, that's it. I thought that was B for an awful minute. I thought that said B then. And I thought, oh, no, I've gone wrong again. No, it's E. Um, <laughs> um, and uh, I said, no, if I can't get him... Uh, into the car to get him to the doctors I'm certainly not going to be able to get him to you so she still leave it with me and I'll get back to you um we then had um occupational therapy and physiotherapy coming in the afternoon because we'd asked for help we've spoken to our doctors they have to go like the official channels and um, they wanted to send people out to assess him again because obviously you know since his like cancer diagnosis things have changed so he needs to be reassessed again and we need to be looking at what help we have and if we can get any extra help or even any little gadgets that can make life just that little bit easier you know see what's available even if there's nothing at least we've asked and we know but there could be something that could have been helping us for the last couple of years and we've not realized so you know we're sort of going down that route at the moment and uh, anyway the nurses rang back and said well we're going to send um like what they call a medibus which is like it's an ambulance but it doesn't have all the medical equipment all the machines and everything in um but it's classed as like a, a well not a taxi but a taxi type ambulance i suppose and um, they said they would send one of those on friday morning because the doctor said yes he definitely had to have um the blood test they needed to check up on it. it wasn't something he wanted to leave because if there was anything going wrong they needed to know straight away to act so that's fine and um, so friday morning comes along and this well <laughs> the appointment was half past 10 up at, at the hospital and as i say it can depending on traffic and roadworks and things it could take up to an hour it's average is usually about 40 minutes to get there but uh, it can take an hour um, and sometimes longer you know what traffic's like and uh, so anyway they said oh the, the 
the uh, Medibus can arrive any time from uh, 8 o'clock till 10 o'clock to come and get you. So we were both up at 8 o'clock, all dressed and ready and <laughs> sat there waiting. Um, oh, goodness. Anyway, he turned up at quarter to nine. So that was good. It's one of these where Hubby can actually get in, in his wheelchair and they fasten the wheelchair into the like Medibus ambulance thing. Um, they'd not booked me on, but uh, he did. Well, he, there was only us in there anyway, so um, we, I was allowed to go. And then he made sure that I was booked for going back as well. And anyway, so we get there and usually... About an hour waiting to have your blood tests and everything done. Um, and as Hubby got called through, I said, oh, well, you know, um, do we need to wait for the results or are we OK to go home? And uh, the lady, that's K, okay, just check them on K. Yeah, the lady says, oh, well, if you go and check, because there's like um, outpatient wards, as it were, where you see the doctors and everything. So I went trundling down there while Hubby was having his blood test and getting sorted out and everything. And uh, she looked on all the notes and she looked on the notes on a desk from when we'd rung up yesterday and everything. And said, no, you're fine to go. Um, yeah, just get your transport orders and get yourselves home. You're fine, don't worry. So that is all, yeah. Um, so we then waited... Oh, well, we got there at half nine. Got it, it was about, I think, about quarter past eleven that it was an actual taxi that came, and they're like a a taxi that can accommodate a wheelchair. But unfortunately, as when Hubby came home from hospital last time, the taxis strap you in backwards. So he's not brilliant at travelling anyway. He's used to being the driver of cars. He's, he's, he does get travel sick. Um, but travelling backwards really makes him sick. So fortunately, I'd come prepared. <laughs> Girl guide again. Uh, and had everything uh, in readiness just in case. Because, you know, we were hoping we were going to get a Medibus. But obviously, you've got to have what they give you. And uh, yeah, so this taxi turns up and we both just looked at each other and Hubby gets strapped into his wheelchair backwards. Uh, I think that's an N. Yeah, that's an N. Not very good to read these at all. So I just handed him a very thick double bagged plastic bag ready. And uh, within minutes of setting off, he started being sick and I could see the taxi driver was looking and I just thought, well, you know, it, it, can't do anything about it. Um, he's got to get home. Uh, so, yeah, and we didn't make any mess in the cab whatsoever. You know, it's, it's a good job I'd come prepared. But I just knew what was going to happen. You know, it was just like, ugh. Anyway, so <laughs> we get home and uh, the taxi's just put, well, pulls off. And I said to hubby, you know, it was quite a nice morning. Well, it was dinner time 12 o'clock by the time we got home at uh, midday and uh, I just said do you want to just sit outside for five minutes and just get some nice fresh air rather than coming in and you know just breathe in some proper nice fresh air and so yeah that's a good idea so is this P yeah this is P see I'm being extra careful <laughs> and uh, yeah so I'm just literally unlocking and sorting Millie out and everything and coming through the door and uh, the phone's ringing and I answered the phone and they said hello it's Castle Hill Hospital it's the doctor at Castle Hill Hospital and I said oh hello yes uh, can I help <laughs> and he says uh, where are you and I thought well okay you're ringing me on my home phone didn't ring me on my mobile he rang me on my home phone and you're asking me where I am but anyway <laughs> Maybe you thought my home phone was really portable and I could take it all around the country, I don't know. But I said, well, I'm at home, we've just walked through the door. He says, um, you've been to the hospital this morning, haven't you? And I said, yes, we've had a blood test. And he said, yes, I've got the results. And you know, you think, is it just me? Is he like, let's ask silly questions? <laughs> 
where are you ringing you on your house phone and then have you been to hospital this morning when you've got a blood test in front of you that was done this morning at the hospital is it just me anyway i just said oh yes he says well we need you to come straight back and i said but i asked and he said it was okay for us to come home and he said no um another issue has shown up and um Hubby's levels were uh, dangerously high. He had to go straight back to hospital. Um, otherwise, if he didn't get treatment straight away, he was at risk of heart attack. And I thought, oh, for goodness sake. And I just said, but I can't get him back there. Um, the taxi has literally just left. Um, I can't get him in the car. I've no way of getting him back there. He's too weak. Um, he can't lift himself and I can't lift him so he says oh well we need him back urgently can you ring 999 and I said well I can but won't they take him to the other hospital then because the, he would, if you ring 999 it's like accident and emergency he would go to which is the other hospital which isn't where he needs to be so he says, leave it with me and I'll get back to you. So we're like, oh no. And strangely enough, after Hubby had been sick and came into the house, he's sat drinking a cup of tea and he's joking and laughing with me and we're like, oh, what on earth is going to happen next? And I'm like, you're definitely just working your way through a medical dictionary and ticking off everything in there. Can you please stop it? We've had enough now. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it, it was the best he'd been for quite a few days to be fair and yet they're saying he's in imminent danger of having a heart attack unless he gets treatment straight away and we're like oh okay anyway this uh, nurse the nurse that i've spoken to the day before rings up and says um oh um i'm ringing about your results I said, oh yeah we're just waiting for the doctor to ring us back and let us know what's happening about getting hubby and in, back into hospital and he says oh do you know about that like, well, yes, I spoke to the doctor at 12 o'clock. I think this was about um, quarter to one. This was about three quarters of an hour later. I just presumed she was ringing back. Uh, the doctor had maybe passed it on to the nurse. But, well, for whatever reason, he hadn't. So anyway, she says, well, I'm going to arrange transport for you. Um, and I'll let you know what's happening. Uh, he will have to be an overnight because it's an overnight treatment he has to have. Uh, so that was big sulks all around there uh, hubby hates going in hospital oh i'm not going in hospital i said oh you are i said uh, you're going whether i have to kick you there or not i mean you know i'm not um having you poorly in at home and all the rest of it you've got to go it's you know so anyway i talked to him now he just automatically says no but anyway he's got he's gone sorry it sounds like i'm bullying him but i'm not really <laughs> I'm just trying to talk sense to him anyway so quarter to three this uh medibus turns up and we're like oh we weren't even ready we were waiting for somebody to ring us back and let us know what was happening but as usual nobody rang us back but anyway at least he got there so i rushed around and got all his bag and got everything all done so yeah we had to get taken back into hospital and um so yeah so he spent the whole weekend there uh, and then he came home on monday so yeah um it's uh, just one of those things he's got like a second home at the moment he keeps twanging back to hospital but anyway he's back home now um he's doing okay we've had a bit of fun this morning um he's we actually managed to go out yesterday would you believe which was wonderful um, he, you know, he's decided he wants to start doing his garden again which is marvellous because he hasn't really got any hobbies uh, I wish I could get him into diamond painting but uh, I think because I do it and because I've said to him why don't you do it it's an automatic no so, <laughs> so he won't do it just throw all these away so yeah he's uh, he's decided he wants to start doing a bit of gardening again so so since he's had this treatment um, this week he's just got stronger and stronger and stronger which is marvellous 
so that I can now, because he can lift himself partly, I can lift him the rest of the way. So we managed to get out in the car yesterday. We went and we've got him some plants and some little tubs and he's been out gardening today. And Millie's been helping, of course. So I'll put a little, a few photographs and a little clip in there as well. Um, of, uh, yeah, what he's been up to. So it's been wonderful to have him home. Um, and fingers crossed we might actually keep him out of hospital for a while um i think he's just trying to uh, finish me off you know the, your heart's just in your mouth every time you know somebody rings you up and says oh is it imminent risk of a heart attack and it's come straight back and you're like what <laughs> what else can we go through but anyway at least i've got diamond painting so i have done a lot over the weekend um i have got my easter uh, theme finished off so if you would like to uh, see my little easter decorations that i've finished um i'll put a little clip of a video at the end of this showing you my little corner and my little um fireplace uh, decorations that i've done it's not as elaborate as last year because i've just not while hubby was away i wasn't just quite in the mood but uh, anyway it's just something for you to see so that's uh, been a very quick kitting up. I've actually managed to do it with no spills <laughs> and uh, no messing up, putting them in the wrong one. So that's brilliant. So that is little donkey all kitted up and ready to go. And I shall just finish off by if you celebrate Easter and uh, do anything for Easter, I wish you a nice, happy, healthy Easter and uh, if you've enjoyed looking at this and li listening to me wrap it on then a thumbs up is always much appreciated uh, if you want to come back and see what i get up to next then if you subscribe press that subscribe button the all notifications bell next to it you'll be notified when any of my next videos come up and if you hang on and after my little goodbye there will be some videos of hubby out gardening with millie and then my little easter display after that as well okay well thank you very so much for watching and i do hope to see you all again soon bye for now you gardening millie you helping you pull up a few weeds while you're there <laughs> Flowers, can you? Nearly moo. A helping. Hi everyone, Liz here. Thanks for stopping by. So today I'm just showing you uh, a quick little rundown of my Easter things that I've done. So this is my little Easter stand with my little Easter bunny and all his eggs there. That one's fully completed now. A bit strange having a blue bunny. Um, I think I'd sooner done him in grey, um, even with the pale blue. I think it's the darker blue that just makes him a bit of a strange colour, but he's quite cute and he's painting his Easter eggs all ready for Easter. I've got my Easter ears there on my little Scotty Dog ornament. <laughs> and then we have our bunny in our little magnetic frame. I say these frames are great because you can just literally take your paintings and uh, change whatever decoration you've got there. So that was our special drill bunny. And then we have a special drill hedgehog because I think I quite have enough bunnies. Um, we've got Easter egg hunt bunny there, which again is another special drill. And then we have our wreaths. That's Easter bunny wreath, which is very, very sparkly. Love that one. And then that's last year's Easter bunny wreath where we changed the bunny, he was supposed to be brown, but I decided I wanted a white bunny. So we changed him to a white bunny. Uh, I've still got the, sorry about the glare. I've still got the owl there because uh, I haven't got my other one quite finished yet. I've got a gnomes one and I've just left spring bunny there as well. So you've got a little bit there. This is my little mantle piece. Uh, display. I've not managed to get into the loft to get my Easter tree out yet. Uh, if not, never mind. So this is our chicken scene from last year, which is fab. I just love the roof on that with all those long, thin 
uh, drills there and yeah it stayed quite well that one was sealed so that one's lasted a year I've got my little Easter uh, bunny popping over the top there with the eggs and the daisies um, that's one that I've completed uh, just took me about an hour I think to do that one probably even not an hour uh, but yeah it's a little notice board and this will just wipe off so you can write anything on there <laughs> and then this is Peter Rabbit look at Peter Rabbit he's really sparkly and pretty with his Easter egg and we've got our basket there and all our flowers and Jemima puddle duck in the background and daffodils and then just the background so I do like these 3D scenes this one still needs sealing but I'll get that done before it's actually put away so yeah that's Peter Rabbit look at that wreath it is absolutely gorgeous I did change out a lot on this because I wanted it to be really blingy so all of the easter egg parts of it was uh, ab drills but i wanted all of it ab drills i changed out peter's buttons on his coat and they're a brown ab his little tail his little fluffy cotton tail is white ab's and then all the flowers um i've changed them all to ab's i don't know i've not done the purple ones these little purple ones aren't but all these little blue flowers and the yellow and the white are all AB so that it really does sparkle. Look at that, it's so pretty. Really love this. There's little flowers, there's just so many of them. And then here I've put the duck. Um, the duck was actually supposed to be this same yellow here. Um, yeah, I didn't like this yellow colour. I didn't want it this yellow colour. So I changed it to a paler yellow. So we have a paler yellow duck in AB. And then I've just put a very pale orange for his legs. Because his legs were brown, this brown colour. And he just sort of like merged in with the flowers. So I just changed him out as well. So that was our little Peter Rabbit. But I absolutely love that. Uh, I still do need to put the pen around the edges. Um, I've stuck it on the wall with uh, a command strip but I will have to take it off again because I don't want to put um, a pale green to match this pale green colour uh, using an alcohol marker, a pro marker just so that you can't see the brown bits because I really don't like the brown on it but yeah, that's uh, Peter Rabbit and Mummy Finally, our little sparkly bunny holding his Easter egg look at that really pretty i just thought it looked quite nice on the other side of my mirror above my fireplace so yeah just uh, a few of my easter things that i've got done okay bye for now